Hi folks. So Al Watmo from HSM Works posted a challenge. Down here, if you scroll all the way down, there's a CAM samples folder. And in it, there's this, I think, new file called a Fusion Keychain. This is going to be a little bit different of a Wednesday widget because I have never looked at it. We usually practice or rehearse or think about it. So um, maybe a little bit rough around the edges, but we're gonna show soup to nuts uh, how we do the cam on this, think about work holding, material, how we cut that on the saw, and then head over to a Tormach 440 and machine it. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So it looks like this was a demonstration of the parallel operation with a ball end mill. Let's see what size tool that is. Quarter inch, okay. So that looks pretty cool. cool, pretty cool little part with the facets. Um, first question I have is how big is this? And the easiest way to look at that is to do what they already did, which is the setup. So I right click, edit, and I take a look at the stock. Ah, I hate relative size box. So we'll switch to fixed size box. Say 1.25 by uh, 2.25. Yeah, it's about right. And how thick? Let's offset from top by only 10 thou. And let's say it's quarter inch. Okay, there we go. Ooh, wow, a little bit more. That's an odd size. Okay, so. We'll have to figure that out. We'll come back to, to how we handle that. What do I want to do with this? We can adjust our stock later when we actually go pick the raw material. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of, well, no, we'll leave the y-axis that way. So I'm definitely going to use an adaptive strategy to get rid of most of this. And we want to use a 3D adaptive to compensate for, or to factor in the, the curvature here. So 3D adaptive clearing. I'm going to use a 3 16 tool here because we may end up doing a tape fixture for this and I want to have a little bit lower tool pressure or radial pressure to push the part off of it. So we've got 10,000 RPMs. Uh, in fact, if you want to see a good video using a 3 16 end mill, check out our video here on slotting. Uh, I was pretty darn happy with that. Um, so let's do a 60 inch per minute feed rate, which is for you guys in the Tormach world like me, that is a balls fast feed rate. Um, but we should be fine. And I don't need to pick geometry. Don't need to worry about heights. So step down. Let's go down no more than 0.3. And optimal load. What did I I got to go look at my slotting feed and speeds from that. Um, but we'll leave it at this. Bottom, 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 click OK. See what that gives us here. So that's not good because I wanted it to clear out everything. Let's not clear out any of that. So let's look at our constraint, um, or sorry, geometry. I, instead of tool center on boundary, I want it outside a boundary to let it um, machine. Well, I don't have a selection picked. Hmm. Okay, why am I not getting that? Um, let's see here, model bottom, model stock top. I don't, sure an offset won't do it. All right, hold on, was it stock contours? If it is, I'm gonna be really embarrassed. I should know better than that. I think it is gonna be that. Yeah, I can already tell it's taking longer. There we go, that's what I wanted. So this is a trade-off. It's a little bit of a longer cut strategy because we're using a small tool to clear up a bunch of this stuff, but I don't really care. Um, it's still, actually, <laughs> only four minutes there, not even that much. So that's totally cool. 2D contour, that same tool to clean this thing up. Now take a look, this is a good catch. The edge, I picked the wrong edge. There's a backside chamfer. I need to pick this edge which means I need to go into heights and say, that's a bad default, I need to fix that. To change that to model bottom, click OK. It should give me a 2D contour around it. Now, let's avoid changing tools here. Diameter of that hole is 0.2, 2D bore. Same tool, click this, 
Uh, click OK. We get a toolpath, so that's great. Let me go through the settings there. I don't use the bore a lot, by the way, so let's see if there's something we need to do. I'm going to slow down this a little. Um, pitch. So let's increase the pitch. Or, excuse me, decrease the pitch. To make that a little bit gentler on the tool. Click OK. See how long that takes. 16, so that's 16 seconds. That's so little. I'm going to further increase the pitch because I don't care about it taking another 15 seconds. I'd rather go easier on that tool. Simulate, stock, tail toolpath, hit play. Okay. okay, so that's a problem. I don't want it to go trough that down there. So that's the parallel, which is not my op yet. So see how we ended up leaving some stock to leave uh, here, and then on the contour we're cleaning up. I want this to come all the way down. So let's change passes and say, it's actually saying negative 0.005 axial stock to leave. I like that. I like that. Now, um, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. Um, I'm going to put a fake texture or fake knurling on this. Actually, you know what? Let me look at the Instagram post from from Al and see what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so it's the whatever gets the most likes on Instagram. By the way, if you don't follow us on Instagram, shameless plug to follow us as Saunders Machine Works. Um, the the prize is a space mouse, and everybody knows I have uh, mixed feelings on those. So I guess I don't want to win this, but I tell you what, like it, and if we get the most likes, we'll win the space mouse and give it away. How about that? Um, here's what I want to do. I want to actually, I want to make sure. Okay, so our adaptive is going to clean that flat up. So how did they constrain this? Okay, they picked a chain right there, which is good. So all I'm gonna do is take this and put a checker on it. And it's really easy to do. It's one of the things I love about Fusion. Edit this, and under passes, change your pass direction to 45 degrees. Click OK, and now you can see, instead of it going left to right, we're going um, at a 45 degree angle. Uh, a butt. I'm going to switch to a new tool, which is going to be a ball end mill. It's carbide, but I don't think this matters. 0.1875. We'll run it at 10K, and we'll go 75 inches again here. Uh, tool 1 is fine, actually, here. And I'm going to decrease the step over to, say, 0.08. So, nah, that's too much. Let's try 0.05. Now the ringer, it's so we want it to be cross hatched. So right click, edit, and chain at check perpendicular passes. Boom. Look at that. Let's see if sim isn't always perfect on this type of a thing because it's just not. But let's see. Yep. That gives us our texture that I think I want. Um, let's see, and I may well fail here. Let's see if I can chamfer this part with a ball end mill. That way we don't have to change tools. 2D chamfer. I wonder if it's going to even let me pick it. 3 sixteenths. Uh, the fact that it's red means maybe I'm not going to be able to. Let's click OK. Mm. Toolpath not supported. Hmm. Let's see if we can cheat. 2D contour. That's the tool I want. Click there. And chamfer. So chamfer width is already there. 
O2. I haven't seen this before. Chamfer depth. Oh no, let's see what we get. Sim. No stock. Slow down, slow down. I think this might work. We're not, oh, hold on, too much, way too much. One. Um, we're not matching this exact chamfer, but it's just an edge break, so I'm not worried about it. Let's sim it this time and just let's see what it looks like at the end. Turn your model off. See this light bulb up here? There we go. I only want to see what is simmed. No, I don't want to see, in this case, the CAD model backstopping it. So that looks good. Um, let's see. Can I duplicate that? Control D. And let's pick this operation. And let's try, I wonder if we can do the outside edge. Turn off the model. Yeah, I don't know. Let's uh, let's see what that looks like. I kind of like this idea that it has uh, all the edges taken off. Let's go find some material. New plate came in from Alro for some jobs. I will admit this is great, but we don't do a good enough job keeping it organized. Um, there we go. Uh, I think so. Okay. So we're gonna have, to, I'm gonna use quarter inch because I am. So let's see here. That is two inches, that's a quarter. So that's about 50 millimeters. That should work. Got my Herb Blair note card right there. Thanks Herb for those. And then I keep scraps of blocks right here, which this will work fine to secure it down. I think, at least that's the idea. And hey, now's as good a time as any to debut our new fixture plate. So we love this DeWalt chop saw. We hate the factory base it came with. This is our new Saunders Machine Works base. This is actually one of the prototypes. The ones that are getting shipped out now are actually powder coated like so, and they have a steel back fence. But um, the great thing is you can use these, I'll show you here, auto adjusting clamps that are just, just tremendous. We partnered with Armor Clamp on these things. Any position, any height, you just come down, clamp, it's secure, move it to a different location, different height, it's secure. So link in the video description. We're really excited for this. I think it's a safe product. I think it's an efficient product. We've been loving it. We've spent some time thinking about the design and the layout. It makes what I think is a great saw, a much greater tool for the shop. So this is two and a quarter long by two inches wide. I only want it one and a quarter wide. So that's one of the things I like about this saw is we can actually safely finally do this. So I forgot to hit record, but uh, wh what I was showing was we did use a little spacer just to get a good clamp on it and put that piece in there and it's rock solid. We were able to come down, take our cut, safe, secure fingers away, part was cold, Awesome. All right, let's get this piece secured on here. Both sides are fine. I'm just gonna scotch bright it a little to knock off the worst. Make sure there's any burr that's gonna keep it from laying flat. Some acetone, clean her off. Let that dry for a minute. This is also the soft debut of part of our new organization system, which is a tool dedicated cart. I freaking, I'm, we'll have a full video on this soon, but Kaizen foam, shower boxes, our tool height setter, all the tools I need. I've got the scissors I need right here. They're there every time. And that's gonna let me cut my strips for this. And on to our guy, I don't honestly care too much about it being centered because we've got a fair amount of play here. 
like so. 3 16 Lakeshore, got to rock the stubbies, folks, shorten up, and there's a ball. Uh, I'm gonna grab some holders and we'll set up the tool height nice and easy on um, our plate here. And eventually, this is gonna have a whole plate mounted here, which will have our Tormach one-way bearing thing to mount TTS tools like so. Got tool one in there, our height gauge is at zero. See if I can do this one-handed while I hold the camera. 2.631, that's tool 21. Offsets 21, 2.631, enter. I always read the line again and then come back here. 2.631, and does that pass the sanity check? Yeah, a little shorter than three inches up. I get the same number. This is tool number one. Hmm, how about that? Pretty close. 2.655. 2.655. We are done. We're not even using the Heimer. I'll show you why. Oop, is that going to fit? Yeah, I think it'll fit. Or not. Oops. We don't need the jaws. Actually, that's all I got to do. Plenty of clamping power for that. Throw in tool 21. Adjust my coolant line. Let's punch in 21 here. And we know our center is in the center of the part, so we're just gonna jog over. Something like that, zero, zero. And all I gotta do now is jog around. It's hard to do with it right this second with the camera in front of me, but take a look at how I line up in my tool path. And honestly, that's plenty good. We've got so much extra material around here. Same thing on the Z. Because I've got tool 21 listed, we can just, again, I'm straddling the camera here. That's the thickness of a piece of paper off. So under Z, I'll just type the thickness of that piece of paper, which is about four thousandths of an inch. We're done. It's rock and roll. We just made some blooper footage. So instead of this stuff, though, a fellow named, user named Jim, a fan of the channel, sent in a bunch of tape, including this. This is supposed to be even better. I also reduced the radial load on that tool a little um, because we sh this should work. Um, the reason it's not is my fault and only my fault. Okay, so I can see where the old mark is. I don't want to, I kind of want to try to line it back up here. I've adjusted our uh, zero point a little bit over so in theory well actually everything in there was getting machined away anyway so the fact that we pushed the part off shouldn't actually matter That's so frustrating. The only reason that last case failed was that the uh, work piece was super hot. And that's so strange because I had a good cut recipe. Why would it have been, um, that doesn't make sense to me. Like I really don't understand.
All right, camera's rolling. There's the look. Actually, all we've got is a tiny, actually not even, it's just some tape residual there. That's what I love about these uh, tool carts now is got all my tools here. Sounds silly, but boy. Knock that edge off. You be the judge. Um, we, we wanted textured, we got textured. That's what gets me excited too though. When you look at, uh... so, so this is what I love folks. I started this, I literally had never opened this file until 152. It's 355, we're finished. So to, to me, to go from a file to holding a part they, they, I'm proud of. I love this. I love this. This is so cool to me. Come here, Judd. And Judd's now got it on. Hey, buddy. Hey, Judd. Do you want to go, go get a tree? Do you want to go get a tree, Judd? Can you show everybody your new fusion tag? But seriously, folks, thank you. I love this awesome stuff. So with that, folks, take care. See you next Wednesday.